Women are a clear minority in STEM-based fields. Research has shown that the major causes of this are underrepresentation of female role models who have STEM careers, gender stereotypes from peers and instructors, and low confidence in themselves. To get a look at some firsthand experiences, I decided to interview some of the women in my life who are actively working in a STEM career or in school to earn a STEM degree. What is the name of your degree and the name of your current job? Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Engineering, and I also have a Master's in Business Administration. And then um, my current job is I'm an Engineering Manager at the San Diego County Water Authority. Um, I go to UCLA and my major is Microbiology, Immunology, and Molecular Genetics. My highest degree is a Master's degree, Master's of Science in Nursing, and I'm a nurse practitioner. How drastic were the male to female ratios in your college STEM classes? My field was like a component of civil engineering. Um, so we actually had more women than the, the mechanical or electrical engineering, but we were still only maybe a quarter percent of the class. The rest of them were males. And this was in the 90s. Well, because I'm on Zoom, I have no idea. However, when I took engineering in high school, I was the only girl in that class. Did you face gender biases while you were in college or even in your career now? It can't just be, oh, you're going to get this promotion. Yeah. It's you have to, I definitely have had to prove myself. I kind of stand on my own and prove to, that I know what I'm doing. And yeah. so I think that has set me above like other people and even other men, actually. Were there any experiences that stood out to you where you were treated differently because you were a woman in the STEM field? Yeah, I think that's kind of a normal thing. That's where you need to just stand up for yourself. Um, I can remember like in the, even in school, like the guys would always say, oh, I have this. And some of us would be like, no, that's not how you do it. Or here's a different way of doing it. And they would just kind of, yeah. you know, <laughs> just brush us to the side. Things are different now than what they used to be, but only because I have more experience. I think when you're starting out, it's a lot harder to be more um, assertive because you don't know what you're doing. And it was just me, two girls, and then this one guy. And he was just being very abrasive and very rude. And he was explaining things wrong to the two other girls who were confused and kind of treating them like they were stupid. But he was also explaining them wrong. So I kind of had to interject and like stop him from like, he was basically like expressing that he was annoyed at their stupidity while he was, while he was incorrect. And that was frustrating. So. The one that has always stuck with me since high school has been when I was undecided about what to major in in college, the guidance counselor said, well, Teresa, you have good science and math grades. You should go to nursing school. Not, you have good science and math grades. You can do anything you want. Mm. That was in 1984. According to the Revel textbook, girls now make up about half of the enrollment in high school science and math classes, but by the time they get to college, they only make up about 37% of STEM students. Do you think there's something that can be done to encourage more females to pursue STEM careers? you don't know what a career is in STEM. Mm -hmm. And so unless you have somebody that you can talk to about what you what this person does every day, um, then that's the only way you're gonna keep women and minorities interested in doing um, STEM careers. But I think it's getting to them younger, but then also in the high school level, I would say you talk to professionals, they bring in professionals. Just like, so I think it's really getting to them early and then giving them concrete examples of here's what you can do. I mean, I think even in college you need that oh, too. Yeah, for sure. So it's really getting to them early and maybe developing like a mentor program of checking in with a professional, like almost having like a pool of professionals that kids can talk to and reach out to to ask them, have them come to work one day with you. You know, like that I think would show them what you do. Yeah. So I think that helps across all fields. It's the influences, and so I think reaching the lower income schools, like that's what you need yeah. to do because they're smart kids, but they don't have the outlet to figure out what can I do. And so I think it's it's having businesses open up 
to allow that to happen and to invite the local schools. As you moved up in your field, did you notice a pay gap between you and your male counterparts? If there was one, I wasn't aware of it. But also, now that I work for a public agency, there is none because it's standard across, across the level. So um, now you may not get a, as much of an increase as the next person, like a bonus increase, but we have at a public agency, there, it's based on the level and a step level in that class. And so males and females make the same amount regardless of where, like if you're at the same step, you make the same amount. Government funded positions have a more standard pay across the board but private companies have the power to create their own salaries, which can result in a gender-based pay gap. By pushing for young girls to have more female role models who are in STEM, we can start to build their confidence and encourage them to pursue these male-dominated paths.